Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on getting started with OER. This is a video version of a workshop uh, that's been offered this spring of 2022 on getting started with OER. My name is Chris Mean of the NUI Galway Library uh, and uh, welcome. These are the learning outcomes for this session. Uh, we're going to talk about what is an open educational resource o or OER. We're going to talk about where one can locate OER, what you can do with OER, and then what are some of the ways that you can create OER. So what is an open educational resource? Well, let's start with what is an educational resource? Let's set aside that open bit for now and start with figuring out what an educational resource is. So some obvious examples of an educational resource that might immediately come to mind might be textbooks or lesson plans. What else comes to mind as examples or an example of an educational resource? So when I'm doing this, uh, this workshop um, in a classroom, uh, uh, I get people to just write down some examples of an educational resource. So uh, you might want to pause the video and, and take a few moments to just come up with some examples of education resources that uh, that you might know or that might come to mind. And here's a few examples. Um, there could be many more. Um, textbooks, educational videos, podcasts, self-directed online tutorials, exams and essay prompts, tests and quizzes, lessons plans, marking rubrics, lectures, courses. Uh, or modules. So all kinds of things could be an educational resource. So how do we turn that into an open educational resource? Well, the answer is to apply an open license. So an, op it, or an educational resource becomes open with the application of an open license. So an open license uh, allows a resource to be shared freely and allows others to not only reuse, but also retain, remix, revise, and redistribute the resource. That's a definition from a fellow called Wiley. Uh, we'll hear from him once or twice again. Uh, an open license is very often a Creative Commons license uh, in the context of open educational resources. And these look a lot like the kind of rectangle in the middle there. It says CC BY. That's the sort of the basic uh, uh, license. So you may have noticed one of these at the beginning of this presentation on the opening slide. So uh, that makes this slideshow or this video, however it is that you are consuming this, an open educational resource. Feel free to share. So this is uh, known as Wiley's Five R's and Creative Commons Licensing. And uh, it shows along the left-hand side a number of different types of licenses. So the very basic, um, the foundational, I suppose, uh, open license, Creative Commons license is known as CC BY. And it allows other people, if you apply that license to an educational resource, to do all of what are known as the five R's. So it allows uh, someone to retain it, make and own a copy, to reuse it, use it in a, a wide range of ways, to revise it, so to adapt, to modify and improve it to remix it, to combine two or more resources, and to redistribute it, to share with others. So the CC BY license isn't the only uh, open license. There are some variations on this one, depending on certain uh, restrictions that authors might want to put um, on the resource. So. Uh, there is SA and then NC. So SA stands for share alike, uh, which tells a, 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 a consumer, or however you want to, to, to call the, the person reusing the resource, that they, if they want to um, uh, reuse it or, 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 or remix it, they need to use the, the same license um, when they're redistributing whatever it is that 
they that they create out of the the original resource. If it's an NC license, that means non-commercial. So that means that um, other people can feel free to redistribute a resource with this license on it, but it must not be um, sold for a profit. Um, so that's a big difference between the the, the uh, foundational sort of CC BY license, with which if, if you are some sort of commercial entity or, or an individual, uh, who would like to sell it on to other people, uh, you can do that. Um, the license does allow you to do that. So then there are some other variations on the Creative Commons licenses that um, according to Wiley and then I guess common practice among open educational resource practitioners um, makes it kind of not count as an OER. And um, that's the, uh, namely the non-derivative license, the ND license. And that means that you can't actually, uh, you know, that whoever's created this resource is happy for others to reuse it for free. Um, and even, even redistribute it, but it has to, it has to stay the same. It can't be changed. It can't be revised or remixed uh, with other, with other resources. It needs to maintain its original integrity. So this is just a you know a, 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 a definition, an official definition, I suppose, from UNESCO that sort of brings this together. Uh, an open educational resource, according to UNESCO, is teaching, learning, and research materials in any medium, digital or otherwise, that reside in the public domain or have been released under an open license that permits no cost, access, use, adaptation, and redistribution by others with no or limited restrictions. So what are some of the benefits of open education resources. There are many benefits uh, to open education resources, and these are just a few uh, from a very nice resource uh, called Why Use OER and OEP from Ireland's National Forum for Teaching and Learning. And um, so they articulate, this is sort of an, ab an abridged version of what they uh, put together, um, access. So all can access, adapt, and reuse OER. Students have continual access without incurring costs or requiring access codes. So in other words, uh, there's not that cost barrier. Uh, equity. They reduce the cost of education overall, and it's available to everyone outside the bounds of a specific module or institution. So um, uh, it sort of levels the playing field. Um, uh, you don't have to worry about students um, some students having the resource and others not having the resource and you're not being sure as an educator whether they have, to have decided not to get it because they can't afford to buy it. Um, everybody uh, has the same uh, access to the resource. Pedagogy. Uh, students can be involved as co-creators, collaborators, and partners, and they can be adapted for specific local contexts. Uh, where can I find examples of these open educational resources in real life? There's all kinds of places that you can find them. Um, so, for example, when you do an, a Google image search, uh, and if you have a look under tools, uh, you can look for images that have a Creative Commons a license applied to them. And likewise, if you're using YouTube, you can choose to apply a Creative Commons license to your videos. Um, so you have a choice between either the standard YouTube license or the Creative Commons license. And then Wikipedia licenses much of its content with open licenses. So this is the um, some, some text that you find um, on Wikipedia pages. So the text is available under Creative Commons attribution share alike license. So Okay, are these open educational resources? Sure, I mean, if you're using them in an educational context, why not? Online videos, Wikipedia content, they're openly licensed, they're often used for educational purposes, so there we are. Um, but there are specialized places that you can go to find uh, OER that people go to uh, upload and publish um, open educational resources quite specifically, and these include places like the Open Textbook Library, uh, which are for open textbooks, uh, which is a, a, a significant uh, type of open educational resource, I suppose. Um, there's quite a lot of open textbooks out there. And, um, or OER Commons, 
which is a very well known uh, repository for for open educational resources. And there's more kind of a wider variety of formats um, that's kind of contained uh, and is discoverable at OER Commons. How about at NUI Galway? Um, are there any local examples of OER being used? There sure are. And um, if you check out this slide, there's links to examples, including a, uh, a lecturer and a librarian at Shannon College of Hotel Management who saved students 3,750 euro in one year by adopting an open textbook. In other words, by um, by using an open textbook in the place of what had been a commercial uh, textbook. Um, we have been very fortunate to have some very strong leaders at NUI Galway advocating for OER, and they're a big reason why the library have gotten involved in open education resources. Um, and they've been very articulate about the, um, the, uh, the, the, the benefits of them. And then um, the library has been involved in the local OER creation pilot initiative, which includes student-led projects. Um, it's funded by the Student Project Fund, uh, and it is currently ongoing. So um, if you click that link there, you can see uh, the details of that. So let's find some OER. Um, Anyway, I Galway currently subscribes to Pressbooks, which is an open textbook creation platform. And they have a directory of all the books that are created on the platform called the Pressbooks directory. Um, can you find any open books on the Pressbooks directory related to your disciplinary area? So just to be clear, the Pressbooks directory is open to anyone. You don't have to subscribe to Pressbooks to get access to the directory. and. Um, and you can use the content there according to whatever the license um, says you can do. Um, and uh, but what the Pressbooks subscription that we have allows us to do is to um, reuse that content and, and remix it um, in particular in ways that are a little bit easier than if you you, you don't have access to the software. Uh, but in terms of finding reusable open content, it's great for anyone. Um, so to go there, it's just a matter of going to Pressbooks dot directory um, in your web browser pressbooks dot directory and once you get there well here's an activity that you can try um, find an open book related to your subject area um, so this is what the pressbooks directory looks like um, if you do go to that url um, uh, if you just scroll down a little bit, um, there's just some some easy to use filters on the left hand side there. Um, so if you uh, click on the subject, for example, and have a look um, for your subject area, um, I've ticked off psychology. Um, and so there's, uh, if you look closely, it says there's 54 books on psychology there. And here's the top result. So um, it depends on how you know, uh, whether this is the, the book you need, um, uh, you know, depends on, on all kinds of factors. So it's up to you to sort of um, evaluate the resource and decide whether it's, it's, it's uh, good for what you need uh, for your purposes, for your students, for your context and all that good stuff. Um, here's just a list of three more OER repositories. There's, there's, there's plenty of them, but there's some kind of main ones. I've mentioned a couple of them already. Um, another one is OpenStax, um, a large collection of CC by licensed OER supported by Rice University. Uh, Merlot, which is led by California State University, along with a number of other partners. Um, it's kind of a big one like OER Commons. It's a diverse collection of resources. And then the BC campus, Open Educational Resources. Um, it's a collection of textbooks created in British Columbia, but I also link out to um, many other um, resources as well. So I'm, I've actually um, found that one to be uh, quite a handy one um, personally uh, in the work that I do. So uh, so there's some those are some good ones to check out as well. So this is again, you know, it's in a live workshop. Um, I, I, I asked people using a shared uh, Excel document just to find uh, some OER in one of these large repositories that I've mentioned. So again, on your own time, 
Um, not a bad idea to just have a look at those and see um, what there might be that's related to what it is that you teach. So uh, we sort of been talking in the space of um, reusing OER, um, finding something um, that's an open educational resource and then you know maybe applying it to your your, your own teaching of context. Um, so now I'm going to sort of flip it over to the uh, OER creation side. So how do you actually, um, um, you know, what if you want to actually create an open educational resource if you want to, um, yeah, create something new and, and share it with the world. So there's kind of two, there's kind of two basic types, I, I guess, of, of, of creating um, open educational resources. You can either create it from scratch um, and then, uh, you know, create some new material and put a license on it, basically. Or you can remix um, or revise, um, I suppose, um, a resource or a, 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 or multiple resources that you find that you're useful and sort of create something new that way out of, out of um, already existing open materials. So if you're creating something from scratch, um, you know, as I said, there's any, 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 any educational resource could be turned into an education, into an open education resource, uh, really. Um, so, you know, you can, you can use whatever tools it is that you use for, for your teaching. Um, but some tools are built specifically for the task, for example, Pressbooks, which I've mentioned already, uh, and which we're subscribing to at any anyway, right now. Um, so whatever it is, you, you create that resource and then you add an open license to it. So um, decide which license best suits your purposes. You know, maybe you're not comfortable with that very open um, uh, standard CC by license that lets people reuse, uh, redistribute, um, but it includes the ability to make changes, to, to, to sell it on, to, uh, to apply whatever license they want to. Uh, down the road and then apply it providing a link uh, to um, the license so of course it, you know this could be as easy or as difficult as you want to make it if you're making something small um, uh, a small educational resource a, a leaflet um, uh, you know photo uh, a short powerpoint you know it might not take very long but i mean if you're if you're creating a textbook it's just like it's like a creating a commercial textbook really um you know that uh, quite a lot of effort can go into it so then you can remix oer so you can make changes to oer you can improve them make them better suit your circumstances adapt them to a different purpose or you can combine different oer uh, into one resource so it's a matter of finding oer that are that are useful to you and then making changes to them or smooshing them together and, and creating something uh, creating. So if you want to remix OER, um, locate the OER that you like or some OER that you like, make adjustments, add a little or a lot, combine, then attribute, give credit, what resources were adapted, um, by who and with what license, and, um, and add the license. So just a little bit more on that attribution process. So attribution when you're reusing OER or, or revising or remixing. So um, all Creative Commons license have that by clause, meaning that reusers, revisers, remixers must give attribution. So one way of um, uh, kind of mnemonic to remember what you need to do when you're doing that is um, known as tassel. So you want to tassel uh, whatever it is that you're reusing. So you need to uh, include the title as the T. What is the name of the work? Um, you need to include the author, which is the A, who owns the work. You want to include the source. Where can it be found? And provide the link to it where possible. And then you want to um, make note of the license. Which license is that work distributed under and provide a link to the CC license being used? And here we've got a picture, which is an open, uh, openly licensed picture. And so the title of it is, well, we have a picture of a tassel. Um, 
sorry, it's a silly, silly joke, bit, bit of a pun. Uh, okay, so we have a tassel, um, and uh, that's the title of the work. Um, it's by a fella called Alan Levine. And the photo is something I found on Flickr, which is a good place to find openly licensed photos. And the license is CC by. Uh, and then um, if, if you were to look at that slide, there would be, a, this, is, this is in fact linked to the actual license. You can see here, um, the, uh, the CC by license that was used um, when that photo was published. That is tasseling. So just you know, it's it's kind of a, possibly useful to reflect on those open licenses and think you know you've made an, and, and what they do and what they mean. So so, so as uh, this is the third and last exercise that I uh, do in my um, in my workshop when it's live and um, just something for you to ponder. Uh, think about whether you know a situation where you've made an educational resource from scratch and you want to share it with, with the world with an open license. Which open license would you choose? Uh, would it be different if it was something small, uh, like a photo or a lesson plan or something, uh, versus if it was something you'd spend a lot of time on, like an open textbook? Um, which license would you use to share um, that with the world? So would it be something that would allow um, all of Wiley's five R's, retain, reuse, revise, remix, redistribute, um, or maybe something a little bit more restricted like a share-like license or non-commercial license. So uh, this is the, uh, this wraps up this, this, this little workshop on um, an introduction to open educational resources. Uh, if you have any questions, by all means, get in touch with me. My name again is Chris Mean, and my email address at NUIGALI is uh, Christopher.mean at NUIGALI.ie. Uh, that is K R I S T O P H E R dot M E E N at NUIGALI.ie, or I can be reached and uh, others working in the space um, um, at our email address for, for all queries at the library, which is library at NUIGALI.ie. Thanks very much for listening.